welcome to another episode of Superhero Sitters, Pet Sitters opening up about life, liberty, and the pursuit of happy pets. My name is Joshua Carey, co-founder of the APSE, the Association of Pet Sitting Excellence. And this series follows professional pet sitters who have stories to share that may sound heroic, but were really all just carried out without a second thought, and as we'll hear, all part of a day's work. In today's program, I'm thrilled to be joined by Miranda Murdoch, who is the owner of My Pets Buddy in Shreveport, Louisiana. Thanks for taking some time and joining us today, Miranda. Well, you're welcome, Josh. I'm happy to be here. Let's begin with a uh, little snapshot. What were you doing right before you opened up a pet sitting company? Well, right before I opened up my pet sitting company, I was working for the Shreveport Police Department in their public information office. Um, I did that for three years. Prior to that, I had been uh, active duty military in the Air Force for almost 28 years. What was your position there? My rank was Chief Master Sergeant, but I was a First Sergeant and responsible for the health, morale, welfare, and discipline of all of the enlisted troops. And how did you find yourself going from active military to a pet sitter? I realized I was coming up on 50 years old and had never owned my own business, so I decided that's what I wanted to do. And I picked pet sitting because my husband had made the announcement that after our pets that we had at the time passed that we weren't getting anymore so that we would be free to travel. So I knew I would need to get a pet sit somewhere. But in the meantime, since he made that proclamation, we've since acquired two new dogs and a parrot, so his proclamation (laughs) kind of went out the window anyways. Tell me what happened starting a few years ago with one of your clients. Well, in 2007, I was contacted by a woman whose brother was in the hospital, and she had been taking care of his cat, but because she lived in a different town and worked full-time, it was beginning to be a strain for her, so she hired me to go over every day and take care of the cat while Jim, my client, was in the hospital. So over the next few months, Jim was hospitalized off and on many times. In the, in the end, I think he ended up having 13 different surgeries for cancer. And then in 2009, Jim asked me if I would continue to care for the cats even when he was there because he had gotten so frail and was heavily medicated with pain medication and did not always remember to feed the cat. So he just felt it was better that I come every day. And to be honest, I think he liked the companionship because when you see somebody every day, you develop a friendship with them. He he didn't eat very much. He was, a, like I said, a little old man. But he would sometimes get a craving for a hamburger, and he would call me up in the morning and say, "Say when you come over, could you stop and get me a hamburger?" And he used to ma- he used to make me laugh. His brother would call me and say, "Tomorrow is Jim's birthday. Could you go and pick him up a cake?" Uh, which I would. So you really quickly became not only a friend but really part of the family. A part of the family and I think his connection to the outside world because as he got weaker, he did not go out very much. And the few times that I wasn't available, if I had to go out of town, then one of my sons would go over and take care of his kid and sit with him and and talk with him. So what happened next? Well... As I said, he was getting weaker, and so we had several conversations about what would happen to his cat's patches and paws. He was losing his will because he was in an awful lot of pain. But I told Jim that I would continue to care for patches and paws until I found them a permanent home. And unbeknownst to me at the time that we were having those conversations, he did contact his lawyer and made provisions both for the cat's continued care and for my bill to continue being paid. The the cats would remain in the house and funds were set aside from the estate for the cat's care. The cats actually had to go to a home. They could not be taken to a shelter. I just told him that I would make sure that the cats were taken care of until they were safely in a new home. 
Tell me what happened when you made one of your neck pet sitting visits to Jim's house. Like I said, I was doing daily visits, and I did a daily visit one day, and I came in and I hollered for Jim because he was not in the living room where I usually found him. But he didn't answer, and I assumed that the neighbor had taken him to the doctor. But something bothered me, and I left and did my other sits, but something kept tickling me in the back of my brain. So I went back about two hours later, and this time when I called for him, I heard a little bit of moaning. And I had previously looked in the bedroom but had not seen him in the bed. But when I heard the moaning, I went and looked further and apparently Jim had fallen down and in his effort to get up, all he had succeeded in doing was pushing himself further under the bed and only his feet were sticking out, which is why it wasn't immediately noticeable to me. At that time, I, I called 911 and they came and got him, but that was the last trip that he would make to the hospital. He, he did not come home from that one and passed away about a week later in the hospital. By this time, I had been seeing the cat and Jim every day for two years, so I also knew his neighbors. And the neighbor decided to do a good deed because the grass hadn't been watered, and he had hooked up the sprinkler uh, in the backyard. And when I walked into the house, the kitchen and the laundry room were both completely flooded. Each room had about three inches of standing water because, unbeknownst to anybody, the previous winter... The pipe going to that out ho outside hose bib had cracked inside the wall. So the water was just going into the wall and eventually under the, the wall into the kitchen and the laundry room. Wow. So at this point, Jim passes on, and how long before we have a happy ending for the cats, which were provisioned to stay in the home. You continue to go on and care for them in their home every day at this point, right? Yes. Jim passed away in September, and I've seen the cats every day since. And um, as a matter of fact, today uh, at 6 o'clock, I am meeting a woman who is driving 150 miles round trip to come take patches and paws home to live with her dog and her pet pig and her children. So you successfully, uh, you said uh, September, so about five or six months, you have been going every day to Jim's home to take care of his cats. Yes, every day. And that, that's the kind of sad part because patches and paws are very, they're not Heidi cats. They're very friendly cats, and they love to play, so they needed human companionship. So the timing of this conversation couldn't be more perfect because purely coincidental, today you have successfully adopted them out to a, to a great loving home. Yes, this young woman emailed me and um, said she had been waiting for two cats just like Patches and Paws and she's meeting me today at 6 o'clock. And like I said, bless her heart, she's driving 150 miles round trip to do this. Wow. Well, really bless your heart, Miranda. I mean, that is an incredible story. What do you think the lesson of all this is? Because let's not forget when the sister first contacted you a few years ago, you were just a stranger, and only after time did you become a friend and even more so a family member. Well, I think the biggest lesson is, number one, if you know you have a chronic terminal illness, to make arrangements for your pets while you still can. And number two, you got to find a pet sitter that you can trust to take care of things in your absence and that you know will handle things the way you want it to. It would have been easy to take the cats to a shelter and drop them off. So you want to make sure that your pet sitter is on the same wavelength with you as far as what the pets deserve and how they deserve to live the rest of their life. Well, if this is any indication how you treat all of your clients, I would certainly welcome the opportunity to be one of those clients. And I do want to thank you, Miranda, for taking the time to uh, speak with us and share your beautiful story. Well, thank you, Josh, for giving me the opportunity to tell everyone about Patches and Paws. 